Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be doing printmaking with rubber stamps, and the project that I'm going to be creating is a hand printed bandana, but you can print on all different surfaces. So, I'll be showing you how to create your own hand carved stamp. So, we'll transfer design onto rubber, carve it, and then print with it. And along with that, I'll be giving a few tips on how you can dye fabric with some ingredients from your kitchen. So let's get started. Here's what you'll need for this project. Fabric printing ink, black ink that comes with your Speedy Carve kit, a handle for three blades, a pencil, your Speedy Carve block, some tracing paper, a printing plate, and a brayer. Additionally, you'll need some bandanas to print on. You can also print on paper, um, including gift wrap or stationery and envelopes. Other helpful items are a template for different designs, a small cutting mat, bone folder, and craft knife. To load your blade into the handle, you're gonna unscrew this part here so this opening loosens up, and then you are going to slide the rounded, not sharp end in till it stops, and then tighten. So these blades are very sharp, so it's important to keep safety in mind. Always carve away from your body and not towards yourself. When you're holding the block with your hands, just make sure your fingers are not in the path of the blade as you're carving. So put them to the side. Uh, that seems like a no-brainer, but it's easy to get really focused and kind of forget where your hands are. So always make sure they're not in the path of the blade. The other thing is the angle with which you're carving. You don't want to gouge into the rubber um, at a sharp angle. You want to kind of be skimming the surface. And so this will not only help with smooth cuts, but will prevent you from kind of getting snagged on the rubber and perhaps slipping and then potentially cutting yourself. When it comes to artwork for your stamp, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can do something more geometric or you can do something organic. It's really up to you. Um, you can freestyle draw something or if you're more comfortable, you can trace from the template provided. See the link in the description of the video to download this PDF. If you're new to stamp carving, it can be helpful to start with something that's a little bit simpler um, before you get more elaborate. You will be able to fit multiple stamps on this block if you're staying kind of small to medium, so you can, you can play with different things. One thing to keep in mind as you're drawing or tracing your design is any line that you carve out. So for example, with this one here, these lines I carved out, that's gonna be where the fabric or material underneath shows through. So the raised areas is what's gonna get the ink and what will show up in your pattern. And then anything you carve away will be negative space. One thing that's helpful is using tracing paper you can draw your design on here and then transfer it to the block, or you can trace something from a template and then transfer it onto the block. So I'm gonna choose this design here and simply trace with a pencil. And you want your lines to be fairly heavy so that it transfers well. And you could, if you're doing one of these geometric shapes, use a ruler if you want something super precise. I kind of just want to do it freehand. Okay, once you have your design on the tracing paper, then you can go ahead and transfer it onto your block. So you're gonna flip this upside down so that the, um, the pencil graphite is face down. 
that's important to keep in mind if you're drawing something that has a right or wrong direction to it or doing words know that you're going to have to kind of flip it over and it will be reversed so i'm just going to lay this on my block and i'm going to leave maybe a quarter inch border so that i'm not going all the way to the edge of the rubber and so next you want to burnish that on there you can simply use your fingernails but if you have a bone folder tool that's really helpful so you just kind of press down and burnish that surface so that it will transfer the graphite to the rubber block and i like to hold it down and peel up a corner and peek to see if it's transferred so that looks pretty good so now it's ready to carve so before I start carving, I'm gonna actually cut around my design so I have a smaller piece to work with. And I am gonna use a ruler for this because uh, I just like a clean border. I'm leaving about a quarter inch. And I'm just, um, I'm not actually cutting, you can cut all the way through with this or you can even score it and then um, kind of pull it apart. So that's not quite all the way through, but the block splits pretty easily. So I'll show you that. Again, watching your fingers, making sure you don't cut yourself. So I'm just kind of folding back that edge to break the rubber. All right. So there's three different blades that come with your handle here and they go from narrow to wide. So I have the narrowest blade in right now. And so basically it's really helpful to use the narrower blade for details and fine lines. And then the more material you wanna remove from your block, then you can move to a wider blade. So this is the number one, which is the narrowest, and then it goes up to the two, uh, and then you have the five, which is the widest, which is something I might use to cut along this edge. Um, but otherwise, this is a lot of fine lines on this one, so I'm gonna stick with the smaller ones. So remember to um, make sure you're cutting away from yourself and away from your fingers not gouging your block, holding at a, um, a smaller angle. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm holding my block firm and I'm just gonna start carving away some fine lines. And depending on your shape, it can be helpful to make sure you're cutting away from the design instead of into it. This one's very geometric and straightforward, um, so it's really easy to simply cut away straight lines. So I'm sort of creating outlines to work with and then I can carve out from there. It can be easier to move, if you've got curves, to move your block rather than try to move your blade around. So that's something to keep in mind um, if you've got something with more curves. And so you can see this is very fine. So I could even go up one more blade to get deeper cuts. Or wider cuts. So I've got my outline. So I think I am going to go ahead and switch up one. And I'm going to start cutting the rest of my lines.
Now I've got some interior lines here, so I want to be careful as I'm cutting to not go too far so I don't disrupt some of these lines here. So I have most of my design cut out or uh, carved out. So now I'm going to um, carve away this border with the larger blade. So now I'm just gonna go through and kind of cut um, or carve out some of these ridges to try to get this as smooth as possible so they don't pick up any ink. So I've got most of it carved out. It's not gonna be perfectly smooth, but you want it low and smooth enough that it won't pick up ink when you're printing. I think there's some areas that I need to clean up along the edges, but maybe other places too. And one way that's helpful to see that is to do a test print. Um, and so I'm gonna do a test print now, see how it comes out, and then I'll be able to um, finish up touching up the carving. So you can use the printing ink to test your carving with. Um, I like to actually just use a regular stamp pad for this part just because it cleans up a bit faster and I'm not really doing anything that needs to be permanent. So just covering that with ink. Get a little on my fingers there. That actually looks pretty good. So I can see I've got ink right here um, that's showing up on my print. So I wanna go ahead and carve that out. And then actually the rest of it looks really pretty good. So I'm just gonna hit those spots and it's easy to see them because they've got ink on them. I am gonna clean up my stamp a little bit here so that it's a little less messy when I'm carving, but there'll still be a little bit of that black there, so I'll be able to see it. You wanna keep your stamps clean. They will get stained from the ink, but that's okay. I'm gonna test that again. All right, I'm getting close. I'll probably just do a little bit more trimming there. Um, and I also see a little bit here, so I'll clean that up. And then I think I'll be done. looks good. So one thing I've decided I want to do is actually trim the edges a little bit more. Um, and that will help me when I'm trying to line this up and create a pattern. When I have it flipped upside down, it will help me see the shape a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and actually freehand this just to get that cropped in a little tighter. All right, now I'm ready to print. You have three cotton bandanas that come with your kit to print on. When you're printing on the bandanas, you wanna make sure you're using the fabric block printing ink if you want for it to be permanent and washable. Um, with these particular inks, um, they can be laundered after curing for about one week at room temperature. 
You can print on them as is, just plain white, but you can also have some fun um, dyeing your bandanas first and then printing on them after. It's actually really easy to dye the fabric with things you might have in your kitchen. I have two examples here. Um, this one was dyed with tea. I used about 12 to 14 tea bags to get this kind of uh, tan color. And then this one was dyed with avocado pits. So I used about seven avocado pits to get this kind of blushy color. There are a lot of different ways that you can dye fabric from things in your kitchen. And if you look online, you'll find all sorts of recipes. What I did for these two is with the avocado pit bandana, um, I put the avocado pits in a big pot and um, brought it to a boil. Then I reduced it to a simmer and um, left the pits in there simmering for maybe 30 minutes before turning off the heat removing the pits and then dropping in the fabric, which I let sit overnight. And then for this one, I uh, brought the water to, the bo to a boil with the tea bags in there, let it steep till it was a nice dark color, removed the tea bags, and again, let this soak overnight. Before I print on the bandanas, one thing I like to do is uh, wash them and then um, iron them so that I don't have to deal with a lot of wrinkles. So that's something you can do as well, whether you're going straight onto the white bandana or whether you're um, going to dye your bandana. You can also print on stationery or gift wrap. So you can find a solid roll of gift wrap in a color that you like and then print on those sheets. Um, or you could select cards and envelopes from the Paper Source Paper Bar and create your own stationery. So now it's time to start printing. So you'll need your material to print on, your carved stamp, a brayer to spread the ink, the ink, and again, make sure that you have the fabric ink to print on fabric with. This can also work on paper but you just don't wanna use paper ink on fabric if you want it to be permanent. And then you'll need an inking plate to spread the ink on. These come with a very thin layer of plastic on each side. So you'll wanna peel that off first before using it. Helps to have some fingernails here. There we go. And then I also have a rag, you know, sometimes it can be messy and you get ink on your fingers and you don't want that to get on the wrong thing. So just something to blot your fingers. And then one thing worth noting is the ink can bleed through the fabric as you're printing. So I've put um, something to protect my surface um, underneath the fabric. So you may wanna do the same unless you wanna print on your table. So I did iron my bandana ahead of time, but one thing I did was actually create um, two crisscross creases in the center um, so that I could start there in the center and work my way out with my pattern. Um, you don't have to approach it that way, but sometimes if you start, say, in one corner and work your way along the edge, if you're doing a geometric pattern like I am, you might kind of struggle to, to center things. Um, so that's an approach I'm taking with this. I've definitely done it different ways, um, but just a little tip to center things. The other thing to make note of is there is a front and a back to these bandanas. So take a look for the side with the tag um, and the seam where the edge looks like this, and that should be the back side. Okay, so time to start printing. I'm gonna start by adding some ink to my inking plate. It's better to start with a little bit than a lot you can always add, but you can't take away so easily. Um, so I'm just doing a little spot of ink and then I'm gonna use my brayer to kind of spread it around. And I wanna go in all directions here and get an even layer. And you notice I'm kind of dropping the brayer down, rolling and picking up again um, so that I don't 
um, just get stuck on the same spot on the brayer. You want the ink to be going all the way around. So I get a good even coating there. And then I'm gonna roll it on my stamp. Trying to get it as evenly coated as possible. Part of the charm of a hand printed uh, object or um, piece of fabric is just the little variations that you see. So don't worry too much about perfection, um, but I do try to avoid getting ink along these edges here to get as clean a print as possible. So I'm gonna move this so you can see it. So I'm gonna find my center point here. And this is not a perfect center, you know, I could measure, but I like to roughly eyeball it here. And this is pretty close to being center with my folds. And then I'm gonna do my first stamp. Um, if you want to, you could find a rag or something to practice on just to get comfortable if you don't feel ready to stamp on your actual bandana. So again, pressing down evenly, not rocking the stamp, Try not to press the edges too much, and then lifting up. The ink is kind of sticky, so um, know that you have to really kind of pry it up. Um, sometimes if that catches you off guard, it's easy to drop the stamp and then maybe get ink where you don't want it. Okay, so that's my first stamp, and I'm gonna be creating a repeating pattern. So I'm basically gonna work my way out from here to fill my bandana. Um, and there'll probably be some empty space around the edges. Um, and I'll just basically keep going, alternating directions with this stamp. I can usually get a few impressions out of this ink, but when you start to see the impression get a little bit fainter, then you can re-ink your plate and your brayer. All right, now for lining up this next one, I'm just using the outline of my stamp to help guide me um, to kind of line it up with the first impression. And I'll keep going from here. So I've done four impressions and I'm gonna add just a little bit more ink because I can tell it's starting to fade. So now that I've reached the end on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and extend it out to the left. So now that I have one full row along the center, I can use this as my guide to start adding more rows above and below. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this pattern until I fill the whole thing. So once you're done using all of your tools, be sure to clean them as soon as possible. 
and I um, often use liquid soap and water or just soap and water to clean them up. Once you're done printing your fabric, let it cure at room temperature for about a week and then it will be ready to be laundered. In addition to wearing your bandana, you can also gift wrap with it. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can do that. Start by flipping this over, right side down. And I have it lined up so a corner is pointing at me. And I'm going to find the center and I'm gonna go ahead and put my box in the middle and uh, my box is right side up. I'm gonna take one corner and pull it across and over the edge. And then I'm gonna pull the other corner towards me and sort of fold it so it comes across the center of the box like that. And then I'm going to take the ends and sort of tuck the corners in and pull across. And I'm gonna tie a knot. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. For more how-to videos, check out Paper Source's YouTube channel and share your project with us by hashtagging Paper Source on Instagram.